Welcome back to the woodlot. If you guys are new around here, my wife and I live in a log cabin and we basically live like the pioneers did, but in the 21st century. One of the things that the pioneers did was a lot of them had sawmills. Um, for sure they would have one for the community, um, but a lot of pioneer guys would set up a sawmill. That way they could make lumber, lumber for the community, lumber for people to buy so they could build their house. And that was a way for them to make money. So we're showing you guys how you can make money on your homestead so you can break free from that cubicle, get out of that nine to five job that you hate, so you can spend more time outdoors and more time with your family this is a great family business um, you guys can make boards and you can sell slabs and if you haven't noticed they're talking all over the news right now especially about a shortage of boards uh, that are going to be happening so you'll be able to make your own boards too it's just another notch in the belt for sustainability so if you guys are watching I cut my first log on the uh, sawmill it's a Hudson Warrior sawmill every sale they do donate proceeds to our military our fine men and women uh, serving in our country's military so that's pretty cool we'll leave a link down below if you guys want to check out hudson forest equipment they have a full line of forest equipment and uh, they're american-made family-run business right out of new york so they're good folks and uh that's the sawmill that we have the hudson warrior and the reason why we have the warrior is because it's one of the largest portable sawmills uh this has a cutting diameter of 36 inches so I get a pretty big log in here if you as you guys have seen on the videos so why is everything so slow why come we haven't seen these videos ah, it's a one-man show <laughs> so what was happening was uh, I don't know if you guys noticed uh, but when I was sawing the logs in the first videos I had a lot of shake in the sawmill and I couldn't figure out why I was having so much shake on the sawmill. And I was looking at different things and I talked to the guys over at Hudson. And I think it was because when I was first loading my log, you know, I'm kind of new at all this stuff, right? So I made a couple of mistakes. I might've bumped the cage here, the track, which I'm sure I did because I know I pushed it back over. And what happens is when you do that, you'll get a pebble underneath. You know, we have uh, gravel around here. A piece of gravel could get underneath the track piece of bark piece of dirt no telling what and that's what happened so what I did was I stripped out this whole area you know you guys remember I had all those stuff over here I moved all that stuff out of the way and I've been working my way down the track I took the track apart made sure there was no debris or anything underneath it and got it all straightened back up and I actually moved it over this way a little bit further on the concrete um, because that was the first time that I ran it and I noticed how the sawdust was shooting out so what I'll probably end up doing is putting a tarp down here while I, uh, you know, do my sawing and I'll be able to collect that sawdust for our composting toilet. So I got everything back together and now I'm in the process of pinning this thing down to the concrete with some anchor bolts and uh, washers. And I started down there and then I'm also going to give you guys a tip on how to drill into metal. A lot of you guys probably don't know, especially if you're new to this stuff, um, it's totally different than drilling into wood. So let's get a couple more of these anchors down and then we'll see how everything is when we're finished. Now at this one right here, I'm already at the process of hitting the concrete. So I have the concrete bit on right here and I'm going to chew into this and uh, want to get this down about as far as that bolt, a little less so it has room to grab. This uh, bit is actually made for the bolt, so we're in good shape. So we have, we have that first bolt in right there, down in secure. I'm gonna show you guys, walk you kind of through how to start your hole in the metal and then how to use the bits uh, to properly shave out the hole in the metal because it's a lot different than it is on the wood. What I like to do, you, you know, you can get um, basically a cutting oil. I just use WD, I don't really use, I don't have a drill press or anything, so I'm not using it all the time. So, you know, anything to just help lubricate that tip. You don't want the tip overheating 
on your drill because when this overheats, it's over. You have just lost your drill bit, okay? So you wanna keep these from getting hot as much as possible. That lubrication right there is gonna be able to keep that tip down and help it penetrate this uh, metal a lot easier. So I like to start my pilot hole right in that soupy mess of uh, spray I just put down. And then you just, if you're using a variable speed drill, most of you guys probably are, has a hammer drill and 14 other speeds. This comes in most of the kits that you guys get, DeWalt, Milwaukee, Nikita, whatever. It's all the same. Make sure you're on speed number one. You don't want to beat on speed number two. Number one is like low. So you want this thing under control and not speed, uh, you know, moving fast, okay? That's, speed kills when you're drilling metal, okay? So speed number one, I have it on the hammer drill setting and I'm just gonna go in really slow, right on top here, and you, you speed kill. So as slow as you can move this trigger, the better off you are, okay? And you just wanna put your weight on it, make sure you're keeping it straight, put your weight on it, turn it real slow. Now you guys see how that curled out of there like that? That's what you want. You want a nice full curl when you're drilling like this, nice and slow and nice full curl. That means you're applying good pressure and you're good at good speed, okay? That's what you're looking for. Now when you turn it slow, it allows that bit to really grab that metal and start sending it up the flue, which is basically the threads. In between the threads, you can see there's a space, and that's made to uh, let material travel up and out of the hole, okay? So when you move slow, you're able to keep that material whole, and it shovels right outside. I'm gonna show you, and it shovels right outside of the hole via the drill bit. That's the whole purpose of the drill bit, okay? If you go too fast, you get fine particles, and then they can't clear the hole, and you start to dull your blade. I'm gonna show you that in a second as well. Nice and slow. And you gotta put a little pressure on it too when you're pushing in there. That's what you want. Uh. Did you see that? That tip just busted right off of there. Very disappointed with the uh, Milwaukee tips here, okay? Now it's got a good cutting tip. Nothing wrong with that, but the way they're connecting these things here, it's just not right, okay? That's not right. They're putting this little bitty neck on this fat half inch drill that's gonna be putting on some pressure. Here's one that I had already, can you see that? It's twisted. See how that twisted on there? I barely even use these things, right? That one twisted. Okay, and as you guys saw in the video, that one sheared right off. So, loving Milwaukee tools so far. Much better than DeWalt as far as the actual tool goes. But that right there, y'all need to make some improvements on that. <laughs> that's, that's major, could be major frustrating. And then you wanna make sure you stop right when you get to the concrete, because that'll really dull out your blade. Ha! All right, so we have that. Now we're going to switch the drill bits here to the masonry. Get that down in there and then we'll add another bolt. And that's the other thing, you know, why things take so long. I mean, look at there. I, I twisted the one, then I busted the one, then I tried to use the other one, then I went into town to take this back and get another one, you know? You think, you know, it's probably like this at your place too. You guys probably get up and you think, oh, I'm gonna get this done, this done, this done, this done. <laughs> 
middle of the day comes, you're still on number one, and you're like, golly, it's no wonder I get anything done around here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll do one more for good measure. I think we'll try to put one down here as well. This is the last section of the track, so I'll put one right here just to kind of hold down the end, make sure it doesn't slide. A little lubrication. And again, just watch how the big pieces come out. That's what you want. You don't want the small stuff. In all honesty, I think this is the worst part of the whole sawmill build. Everything else was just fine. It was no problem to put together. But putting on these uh, bolts into this concrete and drilling through this metal has turned out to be a chore I would not want to repeat. I'll tell you that much. So. That is for sure. go a little deeper in there a little bit more man my wrists are hurting because I have pushed down on this thing so much you know and again you guys you know oh I'm gonna get out this morning and I'm gonna put those bolts on there I'll let you guys know I started this project at 6 o'clock in the morning I got out here at about 7 ish I started starting to drill and you know all this going on and the bits and the I mean all this it's after 12 o'clock now <laughs> oh my word that's what I'm talking about and then you guys are like where's the root cellar where's the chinking on the log cabin thing you were building where's this <laughs> oh my goodness Man, enough to wear you out. Plus it's hot. Woo, doggy. Got everything going on. It's great though, man. You're out here detoxing. You can feel that sweat rolling off your body. Makes you feel like you're doing something. All right, now I think we're on the ground here. The other thing I was doing was just kind of running the level on it from side to side, which that's pretty good. And then I'm leveling the track, seeing how the track is, and that's good too. Some of these uh, tracks where they join up, they don't meet up just perfect. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. But the track seems to be operating fine going up and down. I'll show you guys right now. Let's run the mill up and down the track and see how it travels. See if we see any wobble. See if the wheels jump off the track. I can already tell that it's traveling a lot easier than it was. I can already tell that. It just seemed like it was kind of wobbly before. And now it just seems like it's, it's a lot more sturdy. Before I could push it like this back there it would skip off the track. All right, I think we're in business.
Hi, Sadie. Whew. Man. So like I said, there goes four or five hours invested in just putting in a couple bolts on the sawmill platform there just to keep it bolted down to the concrete. You know, so by the time you do that and then you film and you edit and then you maybe move on to another project, you got to eat in there a little bit, use the restroom a couple times, wash your hands and uh, probably drink a lot of water and then the day's gone. <laughs> but the other reason why we're a little slow on getting the sawmill going was this log right here is the next up. And the problem that I'm having is that this log weighs 6,000 pounds and even the local rental Bobcat place doesn't have a machine big enough to pick this log up okay we've remedied this situation as well so stay tuned for that video it's coming up pretty soon plus donald trump bought me something and i want you guys do you want to see it leave a comment down below if you want to see what donald trump bought me i've, I've been debating whether i should even do this video because it's so crazy out there right now but i thought it would be pretty fun so leave your comment down below also if you learned about how to drill into metal in this video leave a comment down below otherwise we'll see you guys on the next video if you guys are planning on coming to the homesteading life conference uh, in august in hannibal missouri the link is down below for your t-shirts if you don't order them now you won't have them for the event and we don't have any t-shirts at the event and if you didn't get your tickets yet this will be the last week you can get tickets we're almost sold out it's an indoor outdoor event it's fully open you know, where any precautions you want to take, that's fine. And we're not mandating anybody do anything except have a good time. Ha! So you guys, thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you on the next video.